to my expert panel. Bill Crystal is the editor at large of The Bulwark, and Kevin Madden is a political analyst and former advisor to Mitt Romney. And I have spent the last couple of decades talking to these two guys about politics, but I feel like this is a very different conversation, guys. I don't. Uh, listen, I'll tell you what, Bill, my first question for you <laughs> planned was going to be, you know, how much do you think debate performance really affects the vote or the polls? And now I think I have to, you know, temper that by saying, is this debate performance going to tank John Fetterman? No, I don't think so. I mean, debates rarely have such a decisive effect. Kevin and I have been through a million of them, watched a million of them, candidates we're working for, rooting for. And uh, you think your guy did well or poorly, and then it turns out one sentence gets picked out and is played and played over again and is on social media, and that has more effect than the whole performance as a whole. I think in this case, it's such an odd circumstance with the stroke and with Fetterman's difficulties, but also his courage in doing it, that I really have no idea. Honestly, I'd say this one more than most even. Usually you can say, well, this person might have helped himself a little. I, I have no idea how this ends up playing out. So, Kevin, you know, it's I think a lot of people are, are talking about the notion of um, admiration for a man who is struggling in about six months post stroke, probably going through a lot of um, rehabilitation um, and deciding to do something that is extraordinarily taxing. It's uh, mentally taxing. It's physically taxing. And yet he did it. Um, my assumption is that he did the mock debates and the prep beforehand and he knew what it was going to be like. And yet he did do it. So the question is admiration or criticism for making the choice to go out there and do this in front of everyone? Well, no, I look, admiration, I think you can have admiration, but still judge the performance harshly. I mean, ultimately, this is still about candidate performance and uh, the candidate performance as it ties directly to what are you going to do for the voters? Uh, and voters, uh, when, they, when they go to vote on election day or when they're voting in early voting, um, they make judgments based uh, more on um, uh, their way of life and um, their bottom line. And when you have a debate like this, where the, the, the where if you if you have an undecided voter who has yet to make up their mind, um, they haven't been persuaded by the ads, they haven't been persuaded by the constant news coverage of the race, and they're looking for a candidate comparison on a stage for one night. Um, you know, a performance as lopsided as this can make a difference. So they can have admiration for trying. But ultimately, um, you know, when you have a when you have a, a a performance like tonight, where I think Oz comes out as a clear winner in a very close race, it can make a very big difference. So, Bill, I want to read the words of my colleague Chris Dyerwalt. Um, look, he's been working in polling for a long time, and he knows this business well. And he watched the debate, um, you know, assiduously. And his comment afterwards was, "I'm not going to say disqualifying." He said but only because it's America in 2022 and disqualifying isn't a word we use much anymore. But I know what Chris was saying and that a lot of people might actually say that this performance was disqualifying because you can, you can say everything you want about the fact that he you know, has a disability, but the job requires a, a certain level of ability. And that's gonna be the discussion from here going forward. But what about that word disqualifying? Is it unfair? Yeah, I mean, I think, it, look, he's lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania. He has been for four years. He was a prominent mayor before that. There's not an unknown person. Now, if you think he'll never recover from the stroke, if you think, therefore, that he won't be able to be a you know, reasonably competent and effective senator, obviously, if you're undecided, as Kevin said, you might then decide, I, I'd prefer Oz. Though, on the other hand, there's so many differences between them on the issues that you might still prefer. Fine, if he's not going to be the most eloquent senator, he's not going to be the most eloquent senator. But he's not going to vote for a ban, a national ban on abortion. He's going to vote for a million other things if you're a liberal that you prefer. So, um, I, you know, I really don't, I think we all judge them as performances, as, you know, as if we're judging a, you know, a ballet competition or, or um, uh, singing or something like that. But voters are more hard-headed than that. They want someone who will, uh, as Kevin said, help, their, help them economically, help them preserve their rights, whatever issue they prioritize. They're five, six, seven percent undecided in this race. I don't know. Maybe they'll break three to two 
against Fetterman, maybe that will be the difference. It's a very close race. I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't have a difference, but people do, we all discuss this as if everyone's watched the whole debate. They haven't. They'll watch little snippets. That one line of Oz is on abortion, I think is problematic for him in a state that is mostly pro-choice, not overwhelmingly, but mostly, you know, that should be a decision between, what did he say, a woman, her doctor, and, and the local elected officials or something? And the local politicians, so I, yeah, you know, the state I, politicians. I'm just very yeah. uncertain. I've learned over the years, I, I, maybe I'm just bad at it. I'm bad at predicting the, the effects of debates, so I'm going to say that I don't know what the well, effect of this is going to be. Yeah, well, the, here, here's what I would worry about. Everything that Bill said is right, but I think here's what I would worry about if I'm inside the Fetterman campaign right now. If you look at the debates over the last month or so, or two months, um, you saw an eight-point lead turn to a six-point lead turn to what is now essentially a dead heat. So the trend line has been going in the wrong direction if you're the Fetterman campaign. The momentum is all with Oz right now. And so when you have a debate like this, where I think the very clear contrast on, on candidate performance, and these are judged as performances, I think, by those undecided voters, that is why you're seeing the Fetterman campaign come out very quickly with a, a, you know, a written explanation about uh, why his responses may have been delayed and a written response, you know, and a, and a very sort of like a direct spin about his performance. It's because they're explaining and because the, the performance itself did, didn't speak for itself. And I think you're going to see the Oz campaign just say, you know, watch, watch, the, watch the debate over again if you have any questions about which candidate is right for that undecided voter who's yet to make up their mind. And here we are. We've got only a week to go. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.